let's start our today class so what we have discussed so far let's quickly review the syllabus yeah thank you mustafa so coming back to the syllabus we have discussed module 1 so far and module 2 is going on search rest is completed and the ct vt topic going on and uh, we are discussing currently about the current transformer sizing calculations, right? So any query so far from the previous classes or we can continue the discussion from where we left on Sunday. So let us quickly, let us quickly uh, review what we have discussed. So <coughs> Uh, my volume is okay or should I raise the uh, voice or is it uh, okay? Okay, so Thank you So when it comes to CT sizing when it comes to CT sizing So we have seen that when uh, we use the multi ratio and multi core CT for the substitutions because from the same CT we wanted to do more than one function so we use multi core ct it means we have one ct primary is common we have one common primary but on the secondary side we have the multi core so from different core we can do the different uh, applications we can use different code for the different applications so so when we talk about the ct sizing calculation so we have to do the ct sizing based on the core sizing calculation so for each core connect with different instruments so each core sizing we have to do for according to different connected equipment so we have seen that uh, broadly the ct have two type of the core one is the metering core one is uh, metering core and the se second one type of core is the protection core is protection core two type of the city core we have right so so far we have done and this protection core again divided in many parts right but the most common that we use that is the p class ct and then another is the px class ct so the p class ct we use for the normal over current phase over current and phase to earth fault and this px class ct this is not for the phase over current and not for the phase to earth fault this is used for any closed loop any particular zone protection so for that we use for the we go for the px class ct so in last class we discuss about the difference between metering core ct and the protection core ct we have discussed the metering core ct sizing also we have discussed and in the protection core the peak class ct their selection and sizing also we have discussed let us quickly uh, review the parameters what required for the sizing calculations let's yeah so when it comes to the metering class ct uh, so a metering code so for the metering code what we do we increase the value So review of the city basics so the current transformer have two job to do in the power system firstly it is step down the current to suitable for the meters and release this is the first job that ct do the second job that ct do and the standard secondary current ratings of ct used in practice are 5 ampere and the 1 ampere secondary side of the ct and when we have the standard ct secondary current as one or five ampere 
it means it means the meter and relay manufacturer is free from the actual value of different different primary load current they can easily manufacture their instrument considering the 1 ampere rating or considering the 5 ampere rating they no need to worry about what may be the primary current so instrument manufacturer the meter manufacturer the multifunction meter manufacturer the energy watt meter manufacturer the ammeter manufacturer the relay manufacturer is not concerned with the primary current they only concern they only designed based considering 1 ampere or the considering 5 ampere only and the second job that ct do that is the isolate the meters and relays from high voltage circuit so this is the two basic job that the current transformer do now coming back to the metering code so a basic understanding for the calculation so if we check the ct metering code so what the four parameters are what the parameters that we need to specify the current ratio to be calculated based on the load demand or the load requirement the primary to secondary current ratio so secondary current is always 1 or 5 ampere so primary current we need to calculate so this already we have done in last weekend the accuracy class we need to specify so this is the available accuracy class that we have and out of this available accuracy class we need to select the desired accuracy class based on the application of the ct are based on the power system network type that where we are working the third parameters that we need to specify for the metering code is the ct burden ct burden va to be calculated based on the ct secondary side connected instrument burden such as ammeter's burden relay burden and connected lead cable length burden and the fourth parameters is the uh, instrument security factor uh, that we need to specify when it comes to the protection class ct <coughs> yeah when it comes to protection class ct so what we specify for the protection class ct is again four parameters the current transformers and ratio the accuracy class but here the difference in accuracy class earlier we have selected the 0.2 or 0.2 years but here this accuracy class as per the ic61869 is 5p or 10p available so usually we select the lower one that is the 5p so the accuracy class would be 5p and the ct burden need to be calculated similar as we have done calculation for the metering code the same formula we need to apply and we need to calculate the ct va burden and fourth parameters as we have done in the metering code is the instrument security factor isf uh, isf similarly in in the in the p class ct we need to calculate the accuracy limit factor accuracy limit factor which would be 10 or 20 that that generally we select right so accuracy limit factor means that uh, when the current is flowing 10 times or 20 times of the primary current then your accuracy 5 percentage is guaranteed and ct would not saturate so this is about the metering core and uh, protection p class code that already we have discussed just quickly uh, brush up uh, the earlier discussion now coming to the today class and that is the px class ct <coughs> so in case of the ps class ct what we need to specify for the ps class when i am telling the ps class ct means P ps class ct core not the ct because ct would be single only in a single ct we have different different cores so when it comes to the protection special class core so ctr we need to specify the second parameters is the accuracy class so that we will take as the px third parameters that we need to specify the ct knee point voltage so the ultimately 
and the main calculation is the CT knee point voltage calculations when it comes to the PX class CT. Right? In earlier in P class and the metering class, the calculation was the burden calculations. But when it comes to PX class CT, then uh, the ulti the main calculations would be the knee point voltage calculations. So we'll discuss the knee point voltage calculations. What is the knee point voltage? First, we will understand, and thereafter we will see that how to calculate the knee point voltage based on the CT IC standard, and then we will discuss that how, how to calculate the CT knee point voltage for the different uh, relay manufacturer and which procedure, which approach is correct. And then core excitation current to generate the flux in the core. So that usual value that we select that is 20 or 30 or 60 million per this value that we select. So now coming to the CT knee point voltage, uh, which is the main agenda of today and the tomorrow session. So again, in two class, two days, we are going to discuss totally the knee point voltage. Yeah, both are the PX and PS both core are same. Uh, when it comes to IEC, they call as the PX, but at the same time, the IS cable, IS standard call as the PS. But both both are the same. Now coming to the CT knee point voltage. So CT knee point voltage, what does it mean? First, let us understand uh, uh, the uh, this the meaning of the name knee point. Knee point means what? That uh, as we know that CT have the linear equations uh, when when the <coughs> between current uh, voltage and and the current are excitation current. Any any magnetic material have a uh, any BH curve, right? So it means the knee point means the knee point means as you as you take as you take any any like uh, any person which is sitting so they have leg and in that uh, suppose we have the knee so means what what it means that there is some curve there is some curve and in that curve there is there is some knee so that knee that knee point that knee point the bolt is at the knee point. The bolt is at the at the knee point. We call it as the knee point voltage. What would happen that after the knee point, the CT core will go into saturations, and before the knee point, the CT core will not saturate. So we just wanted to calculate that exact uh, the CT what the C CT knee point voltage should available in the CT before CT go in saturation. I am just trying to explain in a easy and layman language, uh, not too much technical. Yeah, I don't think there is any issue from my side. Let me check. Just give me, uh, give me one minute. I am back. Let me check the Wi-Fi router. <coughs> yeah, now okay. Yes, I can hear now. The voice is okay for all. Uh, please, once confirm. My voice and screen. Yes, sir. Voice is okay, sir. 
okay so i am going now okay let me start again okay thank you thank you uday uchal mustafa mohammad rafi mustaqil alam yeah thank you uday uh, atul so yeah coming back yeah thank you friend coming back uh, uh, to the ct knee point voltage ct uh, knee point voltage so uh, let us go back into the simple uh, ct uh, emf equation so the emf induced in the current in the ct secondary winding at event of the fault would be and one more thing that what we are going to discuss that at the event of the fault all the discussions so the emf equations secondary side so e2 that would be 4.445 ft2 f means the frequency 50 hertz right so f is the phi is the maximum magnetic flux in vapor t2 is the number of turns of the secondary winding the flux in the core is produced by excitation current ie that required to create the flux after certain value of excitation current flux will not further increase just refer to the bh curve uh, will not further increase with increase in excitation current of core this relation curve also called as the bh curve for the magnetic core again from the equation above it is found that secondary voltage of current transformer is directly proportional to the flux e to directly proportional to the flux phi hence one typical curve can be drawn from the relation between secondary voltage and the excitation current of uh, for the core so if we see this uh, secondary the core secondary voltage and the core excitation current so when when the core excitation current it is increasing then the secondary voltage is increasing linearly so and this curve the ct secondary voltage curve i'm just taking uh, the bh curve the, this uh, ct secondary voltage curve have the main region so first region we call as the ankle point ankle point so all this relay operate in between the ankle point and the knee point so first region so ct magnetizing or excitation curve divided into four region region 1 from origin to ankle point this one second region from ankle point to the knee point third region from knee point to the saturation region saturation point and the fourth is the saturation region this is the ct knee point voltage curve that we have so the voltage the voltage at this point the voltage at this point we called as the excitation uh, the knee point voltage and after this point the ct core will saturate will go towards the saturations so for the for the correct and one more thing one more thing uh, let me take the snapshot i'm just trying to explain uh, the basic of knee point voltage so that the concept of knee point voltage would be clear and then after we will go into the calculations and my ultimate ultimate discussion is the ct knee point voltage calculation so that for that we have uh, this calculation sheet so that we will do but before coming to this excel to this calculation sheet to all these calculations that we will do for the ct knee point voltage calculations first we need to clear 
what is the knee point and why this need to be calculated right so for that we are discussing now so what happens that we have we have the ct and on the ct secondary side we have connected the relay we have connected the relays and when the fault will happen at the event of the fault this ct going to sense this fault current and going to and after that it will give input it will provide input to the relay and relay will operate relay will operate so before when the fault is happening when the fault is happening the when the fault current is flowing through the ct the ct core is designed for the full load current only the ct core not able to handle the fault current in terms of kilo ampere means they cannot they are not designed basically for the 20 30 or 40 kilo ampere fault current so ct core may saturate and one more point one more point that when the fault is happening so the fault current have the ac component and the dc component so this dc component also saturate the ct core so what will happen once the ct core is saturated so whatever the current is flowing in the primary side of the ct there would be no any effect on the ct secondary side because your core material your core material whatever core you are using to make the transformer and on that core you are uh, winding the uh, you are doing the copper conductor winding and this core material is producing the flux is producing the electromagnetic flux emf but what happens that this core material went into saturation so there is no any flux created no any induced emf in the secondary side so there is there would be no any any current or any action on the situ secondary side because your core went into saturations so what i required this relay required few amount of the voltage we will calculate that what this relay required to operate based on the relay type relay manufacturer just let us example that this relay required few type of the few amount of voltage to operate right so before the relay operation this ct core should not saturate it means whatever the ct whatever the knee point voltage we have we have so this knee point the ct knee point voltage value should be greater than relay required operating voltage i make clear with the sentence and one more thing just give me two hours and please follow sentence to sentence words to words ah, just to understand about the uh, ct sizing calculations the ct new point voltage calculations and one more thing one yeah yeah one more thing the ct vt sizing calculation is very important topic for the interview point of view also whether you are the primary engineer or you are the secondary relay engineer for both this is very important topic for the interview as well so give me your every minute every minute uh, this is this is very critically important uh, and what i re what the request i have that just follow my statement what i'm trying to tell and whatever query you have you note down in the last again we will have the session and in that we will discuss your query so in this two hours i'm not going to address any your query just you follow me try to understand i'm i'm trying to go from the basic and in the last we will discuss all your your different different queries whatever you have no siva discussion last and you forget about the laser component if you take even though your core is not designed for 40 kilo ampere right siva <coughs> yeah 
okay coming back uh, coming back so what i uh, like what is the point that ct ablable knee point voltage should be greater than relay required operating voltage so once the relay operated after the, once the relay operated it will give tripping command to the connected upside circuit breaker equipment circuit circuit breaker contact will separate and this circuit will be isolated from this power supply source from the bus bar from the source right so when the circuit is isolated when the circuit is open so this fault current would be zero so your ct would be safe it it, it not saturated this is what i'm trying to say this is yeah i think i'm clear with this with this uh, with this explanation now coming uh, and this is the one way uh, of the expression for the knee point voltage we can explain the ct knee point voltage by this uh, method by this definition also that the another definition of the ct knee point voltage that the knee point of the excitation curve this is my excitation curve of the ct core the knee point of the excitation curve is defined as that point at which a further increase of 10 percentage of secondary emf means when you are increasing 10 percentage in the secondary voltage you can see here just increase plus 10 percentage in secondary voltage then the 50 percentage increase will be in the excitation current so that voltage we also called as the ct knee point voltage right i think when we do the ct testing so uh, like most of the testing commission is aware about this uh, ct knee point voltage definitions and uh, do we have any testing commissioning engineer for this for the switch gear no worries let us understand uh, about the ct knee point voltage so here we have ct second yeah someone wanted to tell me yeah okay so let us understand the uh, uh, ct voltage with uh, the other graph so here we have ct secondary voltage ct secondary current rx excitation current or ct secondary current and here we have so this is the my magnetization happened in that region after that when the ct core magnetize then from this to this region is the linear region and in that we uh, want all the relay operations and after this reason this is the pre-saturation region which we discussed uh, just now the pre-saturation region pre-saturation region and thereafter we have the saturation region here and from this point to this point this voltage we are calling as the knee point voltage so so the available ct knee point voltage i'm again repeating my words the available ct knee point voltage should be higher than the required voltage by the relays yeah just give me one just give me one minute sudam sudam please mute yourself you know down uh, the query from your notepad okay uh, in the last we will discuss all the queries uh, no need to pop up in the chat box yeah now coming back to the ct new point voltage so the protection core the protection core is made in such a, a way that saturation level of core must be high enough to correctly operate relay but still there is some limit as because it is not possible to make any magnetic core 
which have infinite saturation level so that's why there is some limit and second most important reason that why the ct core must saturate uh, the second Im important reason is that although the protection core should have high saturation level but that must be limited this 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 uh, saturation level must be limited to a certain level means the ct should saturate on a certain level otherwise at event of fault total primary current would transfer to the secondary side of ct because we all know the ct work on the n1 i1 equals to n2 i2 so i1 proportional to i2 so when i1 will increase your i2 will increase so at, at the event of the fault the total primary fault current will transfer to the ct secondary side and that secondary side fault current may damage to the connected protection relays on the ct secondary side therefore from calculations we want to calculate the minimum required ct secondary knee point voltage or we can say the ct secondary are the are the core saturation voltage by the connected protection relay the by the connected protection relays means how much the require how much the the ct secondary voltage should be available and how much is requirement so that is defined by the relay as as we just discussed now that what should be available in the ct so that is defined or that is required by the relay and each relay manufacturer each each relay different relay may have different requirement for the operating voltage so need to calculate the ct secondary knee point voltage based on relay requirements only suppose my relay requirement is 900 voltage so the ct knee point voltage should be 1000 voltage am i clear should be 1000 voltage so that just above the required relay operating voltage before ct gets saturated so that the protective relay operate correctly at the same time ct core not saturate at the event of fault so we can say that ct knee point voltage requirement is governed by the connected relays at ct and as per the relay requirements we need to calculate the ct knee point voltage yeah am i clear so far am i clear so far what i discussed so far if if we summarize the point if we summarize the point if we summarize the point what we discussed so far we discussed so far let us start from a sketch of slt uh, we have a bus path thereafter we have circuit breaker and then we have current transformer ct and then surge arrestor suppose thereafter again we have a transformer and then surge arrestor and then again we have ct right so the we have discussed that which on which core we connect the meters so in, in the in the middle core or the third core generally you go for the meters so suppose this we are taking for the metering function connected the multi-function meter again here the multi-function meter connected then after the first core and let us take uh, that we will discuss in the next module that uh, for the transfer protection method but just 
to discuss for the CT. For the transfer, we have the differential protection. So for what for what we take, we take we take uh, the CT on the HV side, and then on the next input we take from the CT on the LV side, and that this now like this we need to connect. And this difference goes into transform uh, at is 7 t okay. so this one is the metering class ct so 0.2 is class ct first one where we are connecting taking this differential protection so that ct would be the px class ct or px class ct again that would be the px class ct this would be the 0.2 s class ct and uh, the first is the differential protection for the transformer and another is the overcurrent and earth fault protection overcurrent and earth fault so for that overcurrent and earth fault we are selecting the peak class ct so 0.2 years class ct selection si sizing done peak class ct core sizing calculations done now we are coming on the ps class ct so for the px class ct we discuss what parameters we need to specify so the first parameter is the ctr that would be common for all three core so that calculations we know how to calculate the second parameters is the ct knee point voltage and this is called as the vk also right so that calculations we are doing and we understood so far that the ct available knee point voltage would be greater than what really we are connecting here so this ct knee point voltage value should be greater than the relay required the relay required voltage means one ampere is current is flowing right but how much the power how much the voltage also required to this relay to operate so that required relay voltage required required relay required voltage so ct new point voltage would should be greater than the relay required new point voltage uh, if not if what if your ct new point voltage is less than relay required new point voltage so what will happen any idea if your let me ask one very basic if your uh, CT knee point voltage is lower than the relay required voltage. So relay will not act. The relay CT core will saturate. CT the relay will not operate. Yeah, CT will saturate early. CT, the relay will not operate. Correct. I hope that you are now getting the point. Getting the point. So now let us. So what will happen? All my discussion, all my discussion for the CT new point voltage. Now not on the CT new point voltage calculations. Now it transfer to the relay, relay required voltage. So we are going to focus on how much voltage is really required and once this requirement is calculated after that the knee point voltage we can calculate or we can suppose this voltage is coming 800 voltage or this voltage suppose coming to to something 800 voltage it is coming so we can we can say that the ct knee point voltage should be 1000 voltage like that we can select just we need to above this is what i required so but this value is the main calculations right apart from this calculations apart from this calculations uh, like apart from this relay requirement if we wanted to calculate the ct knee point voltage so we can also calculate with help of the ct iec standard let me show you the ct so as per the CT IC standard 61869 part number 2, page number 25, you go here, 
and you can find out class px class px are protective current transformer the performance of a class px protective current transformer shall be specified in terms of the following this is what written in the ic and from that i took this extract this snapshot the rated primary current okay ipr rated secondary current isr so isr will be 1 or 5 ampere ipr with that we can calculate based on the connected load are based on the connected transformer so this is done okay ct turns ratio uh, once uh, my current is come uh, calculated so current turns ratio automatically can calculate because you know that i1 n1 is equals to i2 n2 so when you know i1 i2 so n1 n2 can be calculated rated knee point emf this is important Right. Upper limit of excited, exciting current IE at the rated knee point EMF and R at stated percentage thereof. Upper limit of secondary winding resistance RCT. Okay, so as per this IEC 6269 part 2 page 25, the EK, EK is the rated knee point EMF or knee point, uh, knee point EMF means the knee point uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, field uh, that created on the CT secondary side. So we can see the rated knee point voltage EK should be we can calculate by this formula EK is equals to KX. KX is nothing just the dimensioning factor. How to select the KX this dimensioning factor that we will see later on during the relay knee point voltage calculations. Uh, what value we need to take. So EX is equals to KX into RCT plus RB into ISR which is very simple, which is very simple, you know, that uh, we know the formula uh, V is equals to IR, RB is equals to IZ, so that this is applied here, V is equals to I into R, and some dimensioning factor, the dimensioning factor means the, because uh, you need to do some uh, margin you need to take, so that margin are that we are referring as the dimensioning factor, so Basically, this is V is equals to IR. I would be my secondary current IS. And when it comes to R, so what would be the R in case of the CT? RCT, the CT secondary resistance, RCT plus RB, how much the external burden we have. That burden is RB. So basically, this is the R and I. Is the IS so that is done here but what happens this knee point voltage formula which is mentioned in IC 6269 part number 2 is not the precise or not the correct method to find out or to calculate the CT knee point voltage because what will happen the CT knee point voltage is totally governed with the relay requirement so the best method or the correct method this will give you only a rough idea this will give you the rough idea but the correct method to calculate the CT knee point voltage is first calculate the CT uh, the relay requirement voltage and thereafter go and then decide the CT knee point voltage uh, am I clear with this statement even though I am crossing the uh, like uh, 6069 part number 2 what written there but is it making some sense why this is not the correct way yeah now coming back coming back to the uh, to the uh, knee point voltage again again one more thing as we have seen that uh, nowadays few times in in place of the P, px class ct in few project few places few utility also use the p class ct p protection simple protection class ct so if in your project you need to cal you need to select the p class ct core p protection class ct core only not the PS class CT code. So how you can find out 
the knee point voltage for a peak class it equal how for a peak class it equal for that we have a formula so if in case the peak class it have to be used it is given in the tender technical specifications you cannot change the technic given technical specification the contract specification between the owner between the epc and the client and as a design engineer you need to uh, select the peak class ct so if you in if in case the peak class ct have to be used then new point voltage can be calculated as follows so the for class p current transformer are typically used for general applications uh, means the over current earth fault applications and the esl are the new point voltage would be alf alf is the accuracy limit factor and in last session we have discussed about the alf what is the alf means alf till that limit your ct is designed till that limit your ct will not saturate in till your your alf limit your ct is guaranteed for the 5 percentage at 10 percentage error whatever you have selected so this is what the significance of the alf we have so the ct knee point voltage would be alf and what alf value we select so generally we uh, select 20 so we can go with the alf 20 so 20 multiplied by isn that is the ct secondary current i into again r i'm going to do here so rct plus rb this rb if you not aware with the rb means if you are not aware that what would be my relay burden so that you can calculate by this formula pn is equals to pn divided by isn is square how this formula is valid how this formula is is uh, used here we know power is equals to vi right and we we can write is as the ir so i r into i that means the i square into r so if i wanted to calculate r so that would be power uh, means you have only burden of uh, the ct but you don't have any uh, relay burden so the r would be p divided by p divided by i r i s r i s n square so for that we can find out that uh, how much if we have 20 va so how much burden uh, we can calculate so and the and the burden calculated into the resistance that that we have done here so that is again the r b so r ct plus r b so again e is equals to i into r and this i r same as we discussed through the ic standard into alf alf means till this limit till this limit your ct it will not saturate and is it guaranteed by the ct manufacturer and accordingly that the ct manufacturer is selecting the ct core size am i clear i am giving you the different different idea about the knee point voltage first first what how you can calculate means if you think in your mind that how to calculate the ct knee point voltage based on the ic standards this is the answer for that if you think that i have if in case because i have in in uh, uh, one of my project i have to use p class ct because it is uh, given in technical specifications again i am going to connect on that ct the r8670 relay i connected but again i required the voltage the knee point voltage so then how i calculated the voltage the knee point voltage so for that if in your uh, like uh, project sometimes this kind of case comes so how you will deal then so that's why i cover uh, this knee point voltage for the p class ct even though even though generally we take the p class ct px class ct so for that we will calculate now yeah okay now coming back coming back as i told as i told as i told earlier that the ct knee point voltage the ct knee point voltage 
each is based on the relay requirement so let us go reverse means 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 i'm just setting my background of the discussion otherwise i can directly go to the calculations but what will happen if i do the calculations directly so if means uh, you will not have the overall total understanding of this calculation so just to have the total overall understanding and why this kind of the values we are using we must do know all the entire uh, process in the deep and voltage calculation so yeah so as we discuss as we discuss that ct connected with the relay relay and this ct deep and voltage pk should be the relay operating voltage voltage let me write here op right so first of all before calculating the relay operating voltage let us do the relay selection let us do the relay selection and once the relay selection is done then we will go the relay relay manufacturer we will go to the relay manufacturer we will do the relay man because relay manufacturer is limited what the manufacturer we have for the relay any idea we have uh, abb like most common uh, the most uh, popular and standard relay manufacturer abb and then uh, siemens then ge jiv schneider like uh, under telling you the standard uh, uh, companies international that everywhere available in each country okay so first once the relay selection done then we will go to the relay manufacturer and from that we will select the relay model relay model and based on the relay model we will do the relay cal uh, relay operating voltage calculations we will do and before relay selections before relay selections again let us understand uh, like type of the protection let us understand type of the protection type of protection and based on the protection requirement based on the protection requirement we select the relay so first i'm not going on the city right now i'm going to the basic and then it will it will in the last we will come on the city right because we discussed city for the city new point voltage we need to know about the relay new point voltage so before calculating the relay new point voltage the best idea that you know all the things that why relay required which kind of relay required and before relay required because relay we are using for the protection purpose so what kind of the protection is required so for that generally what is the approach we follow i think this approach is like the best way to understand about the city new point voltage what i what it be right not going directly to the it will take time it will take time but it will clear your concept yeah so before going uh, to the relay let us understand about the type of the protection so when you do any kind of the project when you do the project you go to the project uh, suppose you are doing any utility project or any tender you have so go to the tender technical specifications and check the control and protection requirement study the protection philosophy requirement so if i for example if i take the let me take any uh, project any any tender so if 
we refer this uh, power grid control and relay protection panel and the control and protection relays requirement and the same philosophy we apply uh, whatever we have we are going to check with the power grid the same philosophy we apply for the other utility at, as well and when we do any IPP kind of field so there also we have we use so as per this protection philosophy uh, again we have a separate model for the protection I am not going to discuss now protection relay calculations setting calculations for that we have a different model to solution and protection relays for the distributions transmission line just I am going to uh, discuss with the CT point of view so before selecting the relays let us understand the protection requirement and thereafter we will select the relays right and relay model relay manufacturer and then we will do then thereafter we will do this calculations of the selected relays for the selected relays so if we see uh, the in uh, in like when it comes to the substation so we have substation and uh, in 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 substation we have the transmission line bay then we have the bus bar and then we have the transformer bay so the total protection is divided into three parts the transmission protection bus bar protection and the transformer protection which we are discussing which we are discussing now the transfer protection so let us start from the transmission line protection so this transmission line protection is divided into two parts based on the length of transmission line based on the length of transmission line okay we will we'll study these all things we will study this all things let me check let me check uh, so CT sizing calculation for transmission line protection relate right let me start from the grid let me start from the grid and thereafter we will come on that so here we are taking so for that uh, as i told that uh, we have the line then bus bar and the transformer bay so if you see this uh, typical grid picture if you see this typical grid picture so here we have the uh, like generating power plant here we have so power we are generating here and with help of the transmission and substance we are distributing power to the in consumers so this is my generating substation here till here and thereafter we have the transmission line this is the transmission towers and then it is coming here and thereafter we have substation we have substance so in that we have an incomer transmission line that we need to protect and then after we have this common electrical bus bar that we need to protect and then we have this uh, uh, like uh, breaker and then we have this transformer so we from here till here we have transfer bay that we need to protect and then we again we have LV side bus bar that we need to protect and then we have this outgoing transmission line that we need to protect so this three kind of protection philosophy we have so if we go to the to the uh, to this uh, protection to this protection so as per the given as per the protection philosophy and the protection philosophy will change based on the voltage and based on the transmission line length so for the 765 kb 400 kb and 220 kb for all these three voltage level for the transmission line we have these two protection the numerical distance protection is key this is required and another protection because you can't believe or rely only on one relay you need the backup also you need two relays for the protection so the the pro main protection two that would be again the distance relay but that will have the different manufacturer or the different make so that for any due to any fault if your main relay damage so if you take main two relay same as the main relay main one relay so that will also damage so that's why for the main two relay to have the better safety purpose what we do that 
for the main two relay we go with the different manufacturers a different make right so when we will discuss the city sizing calculations for the transmission line for 420 to 475 kV so for that we will select the distance relay because the distance production is required this is what given here okay yeah thank you Amit so the, you have given me the model of the relay so if I go with the GE manufacturer so we can select the GE uh, P444 relay in this relay model we have this protection function if we go to the CMS model so we can select the 7SC52 relay model and GE CMS you have uh, you, you told when we go to the ABB so in the ABB company what the relay model we take to get this protection system to get this protection function it is RED uh, REL670 and the RED670 am I clear so far I'm going slow so that uh, you like can follow my statement yeah this is clear to you Amir uh, what about the others am I clear so far I'm going to do the city new point voltage calculations city new point voltage calculations should be above greater than the relay required voltage what kind of relay will take before that we need to know what kind of the protections we require so we require this two kind of the protections so to achieve this two kind of the protections we will take the uh, we will select the relays and when it comes to the 132 kV so we have the distance relay main relay but here we don't have the main two relay we have the backup relay the difference between main and main two and main and backup is that this both relay will operate simultaneously when any fault is happened but in case of main and backup uh, first the main relay will operate and if it could not clear the fault then the backup relay will come in picture and backup relay will operate so that is the difference between two main one main two and main and backup if we go to the to any to any transformer to any transformer so what kind of the relay required for the transformer auto reclosing so this this type of other facility should be available in the relay this is what written in this uh, specifications so when it comes to the transformer when it comes to the transformer so for the transformer we there is two group of the rel, uh, protection system we have group one is the differential protections group and along with the differential protections we have the overfluxing protection because when your flux will increase then the losses will increase so uh, differential protections overfluxing protections over current pro protection second group is the RF uh, and the overfluxing for the LV side this is the HV side this is the LV side directional overcurrent and at fault are the LV side and the neutral current uh, we have so the RF protection the neutral current relay for single phase and then neutral current relay also required so this is what the protection system required for the transformer protection when we have similarly we go to we can see the bus bar so for the bus bar we required the bus bar differential release right for the bus bar differential release, bus bar remnant one plus one numerical bus bar protection schemes basically that is the bus bar differential protection schemes we follow so here we can see the bus bar protection uh, system right. so anyway this is the protection system is required so coming back to the discussion this is this is uh, we took a reference of the project a tender now coming back to the discussion uh, of the CT sizing calculations so the CT sizing calculations for transmission line protection relay so what we are going to do we are going to discuss about that CT sizing for any transmission line and I am going to take a relay that we use in the transmission line but the same method the same concept will be applicable for the bus bar and your transformer differential protection also method is the same just we need to understand one method same we can apply everywhere okay 
so coming back to the transmission line protection for the transmission line the protection system selected according to the transmission line length to be protected by the release and one more one more and the transmission line voltage based on the length and based on the voltage we do the selection of the protection system so there are two kind of uh, kind of protection system used first if we have the short transmission length short transmission length between the uh, between two surface stations then the protection system i'm not telling the relay i'm telling you the protection system first the protection system is the line differential protection system as main protection system and to get the line differential we use the uh, line differential protection we use the line differential relay and now we can select the relay model who have the differential protection features right if in case if in case we we yeah yes it will it will be discussed in protection module also but as i told before the city i'm coming from protection to the city yeah if if in case we have the medium and long transmission line then what kind of the protection system we take so for the medium and long transmission length the distance protection system as just now we have seen in this uh, in this the the distance protection system and distance relay used to get the distance protection and all this distance relay measure the line impedance based on that this relay operate uh, for the operation they require the voltage and they require the power the current and voltage but when this relay will pick up when this relay will pick up so for the pick up this distance protection system the distance relay measure the transmission line impedance and due to that this is called as the impedance relay because it measure the transmission line impedance value and if the measured impedance value of transmission line is less than the set impedance value in distance relay and distance relay is connected with the ct so they are getting the power from the ct the current and voltage so then this distance relay will operate and for the operation how much voltage how much power required that we will calculate and this power it will get from the ct right so now one more thing need to be note here that few utility for short transmission length we discussed that we will take the line differential protection system but for the short transmission line length mostly both the protection differential as the main protection and distance as a backup type protection is used so in this case in this case for the short transmission line we need to select the relay model that have both differential function and the distance function right couldn't even tell me that uh, why we can't use the distance relay in the short transmission line length what is the drawback and why uh, the differential used any pro any any protection engineer yeah correct the, 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 the low the, because when your line length is less then your uh, your measured impedance is less so they cannot op then they cannot operate correctly right yeah and that cannot be measured by the relay as well so just 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 to clear in case of short transmission line the line conduct resistance and reactance value rx by r you can see also value shall be very less so measured impedance value will be very less say less than 0.5 ohm it, it will come 
such a low value the relay may not sense correctly and due to this reason the distance or impedance relay may malfunction therefore for short distance we take differential relay as a main protection relay that works on current differential principle means they take both side of the current and then with the help of the current difference they do the protection if there is no any fault so current difference would be zero so the relay will not operate but if the fault happens so the sending and receiving current will not be same and then this difference relay will operate so uh, we use the difference relay that work on the differential principle and in backup of the difference relay as we have seen that we have two set of protection we have two set of protection for the uh, for this uh, uh, transmission line i'm discussing for the high voltage 22765 kV and 400 kV so in the backup first main one is the differential and main two we can go with the differential relay sorry main one differential and main two we can go with the distance relay right so in backup in backup with the uh, differences the distance relay could be used so if i am telling you the short transmission line so what kind of the length consider as the short transmission line length so the different country may have the different different uh, uh, like criteria for the different differential and distance relay selection that when on what kind of the length they will go for the difference difference relay and what length they will go for the distance relay but if we talk in india so as per as per the central electricity authority in india the, the transmission line length less than 30 km we consider as the short transmission line length and differential relay used as the main protection relay and distance relay used as the backup backup protection relay right so so far we discuss uh, uh, the protection function what required so after that we will go for the relay selection so so now based on the required type of protection system and based on desired relay means distance protection required uh, re differential protection is required so we need to select the differential relay based on desired relay manufacturer means from which company i am going to purchase the relay which company going to meet your target delivery date right which company given you the lowest price from which company you have done your rate contract so based on desired relay manufacturer the relay model need to be selected the available relay model type provided by the relay manufacturer so you can ask their catalog and in that they will mention all the available relay what they manufactured and which relay do which kind of the function and if you don't have then you can found from their website also the available relay model right for example if i go to the abb for example the abb manufacturer have the rd670 which just we discussed now rd and rel670 relay model is available in abb in which both differential and distance function are available in one iet or in one relay unit so based on that based on the required protection based on the required protections we have done now the relay selection we have done now the relay selections and once the relay selection is done then we will go to the ct calculations for that particular relay so for example ab manufacturer have the rd670 relay model which have both differential and distance relay so if we like take the overall look for the abb so below is the abb make relay list for ready reference from where we can select the relay model as per the required protection function or protection system so this is my relays what we have and this is we have the relay model 500 670 650 630 620 
615-611-610-605 let me give like you are selecting a relay so in this relay here if you see on the top so here the model is mentioned here that what relay model we have here mentioned here right this is a uh, kind of the ABB relay so here relay relay model and here we have the application of the relay so if we wanted to do any feeder protection feeder what i mean to say that we have a 33 kb and 11 kb feeder and for the feeder protections what kind of the protections we take any idea over current and earth fault am i right uh, for the 11 kb and 33 kb feeder protections we take the over current and earth fault right so for the feeder protections what now you know that we will take the over current and earth fault so what uh, for the feeder protections what kind of the relay we can select so feeder protections type would be the ref this is the like prefix and now you can select here the model so 500 no 760 no 650 no 630 we can select 620 we can select 615 we can select 611 610605 and now you can open the ref 615 catalog and you can see that uh, what kind of the required uh, protections function for any feature that all available in the REF615 right this is the standard uh, I have created this for the understanding so if I wanted to do the back end also REC transformer protection as we just discussed uh, for, for the transfer protection so what the relay we need to select or for what relay we need to calculate the CT so first of the model would be the RET this is I am taking the reference of ABB. If you go to the GE, then this name would, will change. If you go to the same, then this name will change. So for the transformer protection, we will take the RET relay and the model would be RET670. This may be RET650 or RET630. So in these are the relay available for the transformer protection. Out of this, you can select the most optimized most suitable relay who have all the functions all the functions when I'm telling it means that if you check this so in this uh, protection philosophy there are many other auxiliary functions there are many other function is required so you can check that uh, system shall be triple pole type have three instance high set over current units adjustable suitable rated one one so this is this is all the things additional things required so you can select the appropriate model who have all this uh, protections function right when it go to the line protection so we discussed for the line we have two type of the protections the distance and the differential so if we go to the only pure long transmission line protection so in that case we use the distance protections only so you can select the long the distance protection model so for that the relay name will be rel and the model would be the 670 or would be the 650 only these two model available and out of these two mostly we go with the rel 670 anyway you can you can select any two when it comes to line differential protection so the now the name will be ret right so r is the relay e f e c e t you can now correlate so t feeder bay control transformer line and here uh, differential so r e d so r e d 670 we can select or r e d 650 we can select or r e d 615 we can select so based on what i mean to say that based on the uh, uh, protection function if we go with the ABB, so based on the uh, relay, we need to select the relay model. So once your relay model is decided, means means first of all, before calculating the CT knee point voltage, you need to ensure what relay you are going to use. So before, do not start your CT calculations. First, before coming on CT calculations, first of all, you decide your relay. Am I clear so far? 
I am telling you with respect to the project. So when you do the project, so if your manager is asking or if your client is asking that to submit the CTVT sizing calculations or your project team is asking to submit the CTVT sizing calculations. So you need to ask that you need the relay, which you need to confirmation that which relay manufacturer you, they will use in the project and then uh, you need to decide which model you want. Right, so once your relay model is uh, like uh, selected, then we can go on the CTVT sizing calculations. Now, now, uh, first of all, as I told that we need to do the relay model selection. So now based on the protection function requirement, right, we need to select the relay model from above available relay list. And once the relay make and model finalized, then we need as an input the relay application manual. This you required. And if once your relay make and model decide, then you can also go and download the relay application manual. For example, if I am going to use the RD670 relay for my differential and distance protection, so what I can do, I can go to the Google and one more thing that in the relay catalog there are many type of the catalog available so what exact you require is the relay application manual not the relay technical manual not the relay catalog nothing you require relay application manual so you go and you like uh, just type here i just open the google and type here r8670 application manual so when you type here when you type here what will happen first you as i told that you can download all the uh, manuals from the library also so here you can see uh, library eabb.com so you click here application manual and then 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 here we have 724 page relay application line differential protection r8670 application manual here rd670 and here we have the relays and here is the mimic of the a transmission line right so now the next important point that we need that you need to know that no need to read total 724 page document for the city sizing calculations at least what you need from total 724 is the ct requirement formula so you can just open open here click on the requirement and then you can click on the CT requirement and the VT requirement, right? So, uh, VT, VT requirement is the uneven voltage generally because so coming to the CT requirement, click on the CT requirement, just click on current transfer requirement, then you can see all the things here. So, when I click on the CT requirement, so it comes on page number 23, uh, three, section 2 requirements, current transfer requirement, current transfer classifications high remnants to remnants non remnants so this is conditions and then you go directly fault current secondary wire resistance and additional load you need to select the you are going to calculate the secondary emf of the ct so rated equivalent secondary emf requirement this is what you required so 2.1.6 is important for you so in case if your if your transmission line length is small so we go for the line differential so if you go to the line differential so the current transformer must have a rated equivalent secondary emf which called as eal that is larger than the maximum of the required secondary emf E A L R E Q means required below. Could you relate this requirement what we discussed in beginning? What what we discussed in starting? Oh, that that I yeah that I uh, is it? Could could you relate this? This what we discussed here? What written in this? What written in this man, application manual?
yeah so eal is the my ct so if you see eal should be greater than or equal to as i told that if your requirement is 800 i can is um, we can easily select any thousand or uh, thousand volt ct knee point voltage so eal eal ct knee point voltage secondary ct secondary voltage should be greater than e e l required and e a l required can be calculated by this formula i q max into i s n divided by i p n so we need to understand each and everything here what is the i q max i s n i p n r c t r c t is we know our current uh, c t resistance r l is the that would be the lead resistance s r is the relay uh, burden i r is square i r with the relay current so i r and i s n both will be same i p n is the relay primary current what would the primary current flowing i k max would be the short circuit current and then Next, so the, there is two formula equation one and equation two. Both we have to calculate, and which one is the higher value? So that finally we need to select for the CT knee point voltage. Two IT max I S N I P N R C T R L S R I R square. What is? Let us see here. Let us see here. It may be given here. I K max maximum primary fundamental frequency fault current for internal pros in fault. So that would be my substation fault. Am I clear? Can I get any one engineer who can, who don't, if they don't have the noise, they can follow me. Unmute and they can, yeah. So the IK max is the maximum primary fundamental frequency fault current. Means your substance fault current, that's it. Forget about all this complex uh, statement. IT max, maximum primary fundamental Primary fundamental is 50 years. Nothing means you forget all this line. Maximum, maximum fault current for throw fault current for external fault means now here you need to know how to calculate the throw fault current. So once you done, once you know the throw fault current calculations, then you can calculate the IT max, and thereafter only you can calculate the knee point voltage for the CT. So we'll discuss now. Now the next discussion would be on the fault current because each and everything we know but fault current is the important thing. Now IPN rated primary city current, ISN rated secondary city current, so IPN the my load current, secondary current, IR is the relay current, so that would be equal to ISN only, RCT is to secondary resistance, RL is the resistance of the secondary wire, so lead resistance, RL, SR is the relay burden, right? So now the whole discussion is now the fault current and the throw fault current especially equation 3 equation 4 this is also given in substation with breaker and half is uh, breaker and half are double bus bar double breaker arrangement the throw fault current may pass two main cts for the line difference in protection without passing the protected line so it will not happen that this will not pass the protected line so that's why equation 3 and equation 4 would not be valid the equation 1 and equation 2 would be the valid equations. So now, uh, if in case you are using the uh, line distance protection, so this formula you need to follow. This formula. Distance protection, so E, e AL required, IK max is the fault current, ISN secondary, IPN, ARCT, RL, SL, IL. So that can be calculated easily. But the problem is the in question number six ik zone one so what is the ik zone one what is zone one what is so how many zone we have and out of the available zone why zone one only is really important why not zone two is important why not zone three is important okay so ik zone one isn ipn k rct rl sr divided by r square so basically this formula we will through this formula we will calculate the knee point voltage but before coming to this calculations we will understand about the ik zone 1 
we will understand about the through fault current calculations through fault current calculations thereafter we will come on the city sizing calculations so as we discussed now here for the ct knee point voltage we need to uh, know about the relay requirement relay required knee point voltage and before the relay requirement we discussed uh, about the type of the protections based on uh, the protection system requirement is select the relay and based on the relay selections we uh, like uh, uh, need to decide the relay manufacturer and once the relay manufacturer decided so we need to select the relay model based on the required protection function and then we need to calculate the uh, relay required knee point voltage this CT knee point voltage should be higher than the relay required knee point voltage and now the third point is coming that before coming to this relay requirement voltage again now two more two more calculations we need to do that is the throw fault current calculations throw fault current calculations fault current and one and second we need to do the calculations for the ik zone one zone one just to clear just to be clear please note ik means the fault current nothing now the fault current for the zone one so we need to know that how many zone we have what the meaning of uh, the zone and where we have this zone how many zone we have and why we need to take the zone one why not we need to take zone two why not we need to take the zone three so yeah Yeah, so let us come, let us uh, coming back to the CT. So the line differential relay CT requirement. Uh, in this slide, I took the snapshot from here. You can check here. You can check the line differential protection. So I just took the snapshot. And I put here. You can compare. You can compare. Line differential protections EL IK max I S and IPN RCT RFS SR divided by RR square E two IT max I S and IPN RCT this 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 right. So this two we need to do the calculations IK and uh, IT max we need to calculate. Now coming on the fault current. So differential relay equations in differential relay equations. Now we need to know about the fault current. So let us understand about the fault current nature and the type of the fault current. What is the fault current? You all know, right? So I'm not going to discuss about the uh, uh, like uh, so. The type of the fault current and the nature of the fault current. So, as there are two types of the fault current based on the location of fault occurred in power system. First, if the fault is happening in your substation, if the fault is happening inside your substation, inside your here, somewhere here, the fault current is happening, somewhere here. Fault. So that fault current we call as the closing fault. So this this type of the fault current we call as the closing fault. Close in fault because if you see in the formula it is given here. Uh, maximum primary fundamental frequency fault current for internal close in fault. So the first is the internal closing fault. Fault near to substation. So 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 in case of the closing fault. We need to take full amount of fault current in the CT new point voltage calculations in the relay uh, operate in the relay voltage calculations. Am I clear? Another fault, another fault is the external fault, other remote end fault. Means you the fault is happen somewhere here, somewhere here, or the fault happens some. Here, somewhere here means fault is happening remote to the substations so what will happen if the fault is uh, like uh, 
if the fault is happening here so again you have the you have put the ct here so this ct will look after this but if the fault is happening and again this this will also look after this right but here you uh, if the fault is happening here in that case uh, whatever uh, the means that is fault that is on the source or incoming side source are incoming site so for this calculations we have already taken the maximum fault current so for that the ct nip and voltage is calculated but if the fault is happening here so what will happen in this fault locations whatever the fault you have till the substitutions till the closing fault whatever the closing fault you have in that closing fault you are again going to add few impedance of the transmission line anyway so due to that impedance that fault current value would be lower will be less will be less than internal closing fault and when we talk about the this uh, uh, this external fault remote in fault means in fault is happening away to the substance of so that kind of the fault we call as the external or the remote in fault or we call it the throw fault any external fault or remote in fault that may reach till the substation location and also called as throw fault right so for differential relay the required voltage by relay are required c in e point voltage we have to calculate for both type of the fault locations closing fault this formula and throw fault this formula it max is the throw fault okay so now let us discuss about the closing fault is clear to all of you right closing fault you know closing fault means your switch yard fault means your substitution fault means if you are working on the 220 kv so you are working on 220 kb and you are working to any grid substation so for your 220 kb grid substation what would be the closing fault that as per the grid regulations we need to calculate we need to take so that is the system fault correct now if we talk about the external or remote in fault or the throw fault so that we need to understand now yeah i make clear so far so far clear the ct new point voltage relay protection model type of the fault current and now we are entering to the throw fault current calculations so what does i mean by throw fault current and uh, so calculations cases in other words we can say we can also say the relay manual consider two type of the equation for ct requirement the first condition for the fault within the substation and considering the maximum fault current value flowing through the ct core at substation locations and called as internal closing fault second conditions for the fault at the last point of the protected line feeder means you have the generating point generator then from generator you have added a few numbers of substitutions few kilometer of the transmission line and then you are reaching to substitutions here you, your location of substitutions and then bus bar and then here again if you have any uh, outgoing transmission line bay for the substitutions so if the fault happening to this locations to this locations so for the fault at the last point of protected line feeder so if any fault is happening at the last protection point of this transmission line because again here you have this portion again you have the bus yeah, breaker here so breaker and bus bar so this is my substitution number 2 this is my transmission line so the fault to the last point of the protected line so that fault if travel to your substitution so that fault we are referring as the throw fault 
Second case, the fault at the last point of the protected line feeder or transmission line uh, uh, length called as trough type fault. Correct. Now, in this case, the transmission line impedance will come into consideration and this fault current value would be lower than internal close in fault. Okay. Am I clear? So, but what happens? Your this fault current IT max is lower, but you in this formula EBB is multiplied by two. So that's why if you ask me that if this fault current is lower, so why need to consider that fault current? You go with the, this formula. That would be your query. So in that case, because in this in this case. The EBB is multiplied by 2. So even though if this fault current is lower, but it is multiplied by 2. That's why that through fault current also important for the C2 point voltage calculations. This is for the line differential protections. When it comes to the distance, then this value is too much high. Let us see the distance protection. If you see here, uh, IK, uh, this is my closing fault, but in case of the remote in fault, the IK zone 1 fault. If you say IK zone 1, so here in, in the case of IK zone 1, if you see there is a, a factor called edge. Okay, so IK zone 1 again you need to calculate IK max is an IP and A. So and here what happens? We have one additional factor A. So the A value we need to also calculate. And again we have the K here. So the K value we need to calculate. So if you look at the K value, which you can see, which is very much high, K is equals to 4 or 6. Am I clear? Like I'm just, if you think that if closing fault, if we can calculate the city dependent voltage, only considering the closing fault. So what, why we need to consider the throw fault also? Because in this formula, we have the constant some dimensioning factor we have and this factor is 4 and 6. So you are going to multiply it by 4 and 6. What is this TP? What is this TP? Could anyone tell me what is the TP and how to calculate this TP? How to, you see K we need to take 4 or 6 but value T of 4 and 6 will depend on the TP. If TP is less than 30, then value will be 4. If TP greater than 30, then value will be 6. So TP is a time constant. So how to calculate this time constant? You remember the, the which, which, which one? In E tab, we have done this, we have done this discussion, right? We calculated the time constant, which is X by R. And which value is coming 14.94 and that we have used so this is the same uh, calculations yeah yeah already we discussed about the time constant no worries i will briefly take again this time constant so that you can again uh, correlate again you can uh, memorize yeah coming back coming back to the discussion to the discussion so two conditions two calculations case we have for the for the ct in uh, closing fault and the throw fault now let us understand more about the throw fault so for the throw fault value throw fault value is what throw fault value is what suppose i have a my e is my source of generation point and then my from generation from generations we have a substitutions so between that we have the source impedance whatever uh, means we have a fault current 40, 50 or 63 kilo ampere. So this 63 kilo ampere fault current at the rate of source impedance we have. Right. If you are going away, if you are adding the impedance, then your fault current value would be lower. Right. So uh, source impedance we here we have now this point, this point is my substation. From here to here the substations. Bus breaker CT, CTVT, breaker and then my this uh, uh, distance relay 
and now this is my interconnected transmission line here my substation number two uh, the receiving in substations and then we, here we have circuit breaker and now this is my protected line if the fault has happened here so what will happen now how to calculate the fault at this point so you know that this uh, fault current 63 kilo ampere we have here and this fault current is at the source impedance so when you go to the last point of the protected line here so in that is you are going to add the line impedance in the source impedance so the at this point the impedance value will be the source impedance zs plus your transmission line impedance am i clear because this i am going to use very much in my calculations if you see i am going to uh, uh, there are multi, many times i have add the impedance value so if you see rz1 so i have added the values here I have added the values here. So why I am doing this addition? For that you must have the correct understanding. Yeah. If you see throw fault current, so throw fault current calculations. When I done the calculations manually, so resistance value till the location of throw fault the source resistance RL RS plus the transmission line resistance through that we are calculating the resistance at the point of the fault similarly reactance similarly we can calculate the impedance uh, I need at least uh, the quick response uh, you believe me that uh, this this city sizing calculations I'm uh, like uh, discussing a lot for each core and this is one of the best method we can understand about the city and voltage calculations. Okay. And going uh, with detail, depth, what is uh, possible and not even not uh, like uh, uh, leaving any dot covering all the point. So against that, I just need your response because I cannot see you physically that that's the only reason yeah so coming back coming back to the yeah thank you observe Thank you, Yasmin. Yeah, thank you, Mohammed Absal. Yeah, detailed discussion. <laughs> That's why it's taking time. No worries. Ultimate target after this session, you must have confidence on the CTV sizing calculations. On the CT sizing calculations. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Now coming coming back to the uh, as I told, as I told here that uh, when your line length, uh, uh, when you go to the throw fault current calculations, your fault current will change. And as I told that, this fault current will change due to the line impedance. And that fault current would be lower. Let us see. Let us see some example. Let us see some example uh, through e tap as well about the throw fault current. So what I did, what I did just for the like let me take let me take uh, already we have one network so that we can see let me show you uh, I think you all already know how to make the SLD so I'm not going to uh, draw the SLD because already we have discussed in class day two or day three day two I think okay so this is my uh, here I have the grid here I have the grid right rating 220 kb short circuit current uh, uh, I'm taking 63 kilo ampere. XPR I'm taking 14. Already calculations done for this XPR. Right. So connecting to the bus, and now from this bus, uh, from this bus, connecting one transmission line, and this is my another substation two bus here. And between that, we have this protected line. So let us see this uh, transmission line length. We have 20 kilometer. 
length 20 km right and then uh, here we have the 24 meter height of the transmission tower and ABC this is spacing we have right so if we do the short circuit analysis what would be the result I just wanted to show you the through point current value so here uh, if we go to the three phase fault what would be the value let me uh, take the fault here also and then we do the value so if you see my source fault current was 63 kilo ampere so my uh, closing fault would be 63 kilo ampere point number one is this point number two when we add a 20 kilometer transmission line so if we reach to next substation if you recall our uh, our uh, the fault current calculation class you remember that uh, we done calculation for a solar power plant the fault current calculations right so here the receiving ends the receiving substation so when we add this 20 kilometer line so at this point suppose this is my last point of the uh, protected line so at this point the fault current is coming that is 13.6 kilo ampere so how this fault current is reduced from 63 to 13.6 due to this transmission line impedance if I increase the value, if I increase the value, let us from 20, if we go to the 40 kilometer transmission line, then what will happen? In that case, if you see here, initially it was 13 point something. And now if we increase by two times the length, then this fault current is reduced by half. And now this is 7.6 kilo ampere, right? So we need to take this 7.6 kilo ampere. We need to take this uh, 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 this fault current, and based on that, we need to calculate the relay required operating voltage. Right. So till this point, till this point, what would be the impedance? This much impedance plus this much impedance. That would be the impedance. Now this is what uh, uh, like we can understand about the through fault current. So just to just to, to clear. Just to clear, I have added three different different cases. Uh, case one, when the transmission line is 20 kilometer, then at the remote side, what the fault current and what would be the what the fault current can reach to the substation from the remote side that would be 15.266. If your line length is 40 kilometer, then the fault current that could reach that would be 8, and if 60, then this fault current could reach to the 6 kilometer. So again again when you are doing your calculations a second important point uh, when you start doing the city sizing calculation first important point i told you that you need to uh, decide the relay manufacturer relay model second important point you need to know about your transmission line length you need to know about transmission line impedance this impedance would be the summation of resistance and reactance so you need to know about your transmission line resistance reactance impedance and transmission line length after that you start the calculations CT sizing calculations right so what I do I'll, I will take a reference from one of the executed project for the transmission line length and resistance reactance and we will do we will do one CT sizing calculations through this uh, through this uh, Excel sheet. Okay. So coming back coming back to the throw fault coming back to the throw fault. So exercise for throw fault current for differential relay CT equation. The throw fault current calculation is required in case of external fault or transmission line remote in fault. Since the current or fault current depends on the line conductor resistance and line conductor reactance, our fault current will depend on the total impedance of the line. It will depend on total impedance value of transmission line conductor or if you have cable then it would be the impedance of cable conductor so we need to calculate the total resistance and total reactance 
at the fault location. So how to calculate total resistance and total reactance at the fault locations uh, so that we can calculate the fault current. The total resistance would be total source resistance first of all. From generator, from generating point of uh, uh, power till your substation and then again you are transmitting so that next transmission line length. So total resistance would be total source resistance or total system resistance and that system resistance or source resistance can be calculated based on the available fault current. If your fault current is high then source resistance is lower. If your fault current is lower than so it means the resistance is high. So we already have the fault current. So through that we will derive the resistance and reactance. So total source resistance plus connected transmission line or cable resistance. Total reactance till the fault locations. Total source reactance plus the connected transmission line reactance or cable reactance. This is how we can calculate the uh, total resistance and reactance till the fault locations. Now, now before going to the fault current calculations, before going to the resistance and reactance calculations, let us once review the nature of fault current. So source resistance, source reactance and short circuit current nature. Because through the short circuit current nature, we are going to calculate the source resistance and reactance. Because this uh, connected transmission line is the input from the uh, line contractor or the client. Okay, so that this we will get as the input, but this we will this we can calculate also the source resistance and reactance. So for that we need to understand about the fault current nature. So before calculating the source resistance, source reactance, and through fault current. We should aware the nature of short circuit current and from that we can find out the source resistance, source reactance and total impedance value till the substration. So at the event of the fault, the actual short circuit current consists of the two component as follows. The sinusoidal varying AC component plus the DC component. Why the DC component uh, have? Why the DC component uh, available in the system. Could anyone reply? Yeah, let me check. DC component due to the inductance and character swing. DC component due to the index inductance. Your, in, your inductor store the energy in terms of the 1 by 2 Li square. Your capacitance store the energy in terms of the 1 by 2 CV square. So what will happen when your capacitance and your inductance storing the energy then what will happen if any low resistance low impedance path is achieved so whatever the energy this capacitance and uh, inductive element have stored that all energy they will discharge through that low resistance point but that discharge of energy means your capacitance that you can see as battery suppose you, you see have you have so when they will they are going to discharge the their energy so they will not just follow the sinusoidal path they will follow a dc path they will follow a constant a, a decaying path a decaying line what i mean to say what I mean to say, they, they will follow just, just, uh, just, uh, they will follow just uh, kind of this line. Initially, they have higher energy and with respect to the time, they are discharging their energy. So, this, this is not the sinusoidal uh, curve. That is why this type of the curve we are referring as the DC curve because there, there is no any uh, time varying curve. So that's why, that's why due to this uh, stored energy, they are discharging and they are discharging in a sinusoidal, in a, in a, in a uh, constant decaying curve. So that we are referring as the DC component, right? 
yeah due to the capacity voltage and due to the inductive stored energy so now the point is that the uh, when the fault is happening the fault current have the two component sinusoidal varying ac component and the exponential decaying dc component and that current decays and how how fast this current will decay it will depend on your resistance uh, on the time constant l by r and uh, it will depend on your system reactance and re, uh, reactance and resistance x by r or it will depend on the time constant l by r based on system inductance l value and based on the system re re resistance r value or l means we can say x also so based on x and r value this they will decay uh, the dc component will decay right and if the dc if your x by r is higher it means the in the de in the uh, in the decaying of dc component it will take higher time it means your your dc component value would be higher it means your total net fault current will be higher right and when we add both ac component and dc component so when we add both the component we can make a bottom and top envelope and that envelope would be the short circuit current at the at that moment what i mean to say what i mean to say that if you see this curve so this is the current and time uh, because short circuit current so uh, we are discussing current with respect to the time so if you see this curve if you see, i'm just trying to keep this keep this as as simple as possible so that any any electrical engineer who have experience or don't or without experience they can easily correlate this so the short circuit current as so current here short circuit current and here we have the time so as i told the, uh, the short circuit current have the two components this is my ac component ac component right and this is not uh, the like pure ac waveform because this is this is the short circuit current so uh, that's why you cannot that they are uh, following the symmetry so this is my ac component ac component and with respect to the time this is coming to the to the uh, pure sinusoidal form but initially it uh, have the transient plus as i told they have the dc component so this dotted line this one this one it, it is my dc component dc component dc component right so what now what we are doing that we are adding this ac component plus we are adding this dc component so at this point at this point i have this much source circuit current at this point i have this much source circuit current which would be the peak source circuit current that we can find out by this formula 202 divided into k which would be the peak source circuit but when the time is uh, when the time is increasing then the source circuit current value will decrease right so this is the dc component and here this this at this point this would be my ac component but at this point this ac plus this dc component that you have this much so you need to draw here so ac plus dc this would be the short circuit current at this moment then short circuit current at this moment ac plus again ac plus dc both you are adding here right and ultimately what will happen this will decay this will decay here and after that once this decays then this after that we have only symmetrical symmetrical short circuit current no any unsymmetrical short circuit current. this dc component make the symmetrical short circuit current into unsymmetrical short circuit current right so this this is the nature of short circuit current so and a bottom of top envelope uh, and a bottom of uh, and a bottom and top envelope bottom envelope also similarly uh, bottom and top envelope that is the short circuit current value at that moment adding both ac and dc the time constant means time required to decay the dc component at event of short circuit or we can say for how much time dc current available at instant of short circuit in total short circuit current in, in the total short circuit current right so this is the nature of the short circuit current short circuit current so so if we talk about the dc component so as we know that when any short circuit occurs the total short circuit consists of 
AC component that varies sinusoidally with the time, also known as symmetrical current component, plus a DC component non periodic and the decays exponentially with the time constant TP. TP is equals to L by R. Already we have done this calculation so uh, about this TP time constant tau. So TP would be L by R. So uh, L is the power system source inductance and R will uh, and power system source resistance would be R. So by this formula I just wanted to reach here. Total resistance and total source reactance, right? That's why I'm discussing these all things. So L is the L R is the inductance and resistance, right? And therefore, with the help of L by R, we can derive the power system source resist source reactance X and the source resistance R. X is what? 2 pi F L. X L is equal to 2 pi F L. So when, when we know uh, the L, so we can derive the X. So we know the X and we know the R. So x by r, when we do the x by r ratio, again then we can derive the x uh, and r separately also. So x by r is equal to 2 pi of tp. This is also formula for the time constant. And thus we can also say that the source x by r ratio will affect the DC component time. Higher the x by r ratio of the circuit, the longer DC component. And it will take long time to decay. It means that... Uh, in total source current, the DC component contribution is higher. Now, let us come to X by R, to, to this source, to this source resistance and reactance calculations. So, before that, we discuss about source circuit current nature. nature. Uh, this DC component, uh, this time constant calculations, this is the same, same formula that we have applied during the ETAP class where we have calculated uh, this source grid X by R. Same formula, we are again going to just revise. So at, and as substance the circuit breaker used to break, in, in the substance we use the circuit breaker to, to break the DC component of short circuit current along with the AC component breaking of the total source circuit current. So I just want to stress here, to specify here, when you select any circuit breaker, not only focus on their AC breaking capacity that how much AC current they can break 40 kilo ampere or how much peak AC, uh, how much the uh, a peak AC current that they can break or make. You also need to focus, you also need to concentrate how much DC current they can break uh, because this DC current breaking is done achieved by the circuit breaker only. So, so uh, and once your circuit is isolated, then your fault can go into zero. So, and this isolation achieved by the circuit breaker. So, based on the circuit breaker. Uh, DC component breaking capacity, we will calculate the time constant that how much time required to decay the DC component, right? So the DC component breaking capacity of circuit breaker can be taken as an as input from CB manufacturer, uh, technical data sheet or the circuit breaker rating plate, right? Uh, this snapshot I took from the circuit breaker uh, rating plate. So circuit breaker DC current breaking capacity, 61% is that they can break. And how much breaking time? That is 40 milliseconds or opening time or the breaking time for the circuit breaker. Okay. So the percentage DC component can be taken by above and by below equations we can calculate the DC time constant. So TP is equals to again the, the same formula we are uh, discussing. Uh, T T is the like your breaking time divided by log ln. Under root 2 divided percentage DC into 100. So 40 divided by ln root 2 divided percentage DC component breaking capacity 61 percentage into 100. So the time constant it is taking 47.57 millisecond. Right. In that T is the circuit breaker breaking time. TP is the time constant of the system that we are calculating. Percentage DC is the DC breaking capacity. Break, uh, how much DC circuit breaker can. ln is the log here. 
which uh, ln is the log you recall that uh, it app uh, it app x through the excel we have done this calculations during the it app session okay is it so please check that class recording okay now now coming uh, to the uh, ct breaking uh, uh, rating plate to verify this dc component let us see now the dc comp you, you can see here abb make uh, rating plate i took this dc component percentage uh, for this is for the 220 kv or 255 kv and this is for the 400 or 500 kv dc component uh, dc component breaking capacity is 56 percentage so whatever breaker you are taking based on that you are going to decide how much time required to break down the dc or how much till how much time this dc current will exist in the system so once your tp is calculated time constant is calculated right so we know that time constant time constant tp therefore x y r is equals to 2 pi f into tp this is the formula for the x y r ratio calculations because this tp is what tp is equals to l by r uh, right tp is equals to what time constant is time constant tp this we rewrite as l by r and l we can re uh, this l we can uh, l by r so x by r will, will be what x is equals to how, what we can write x is equals to 2 pi f l that is the uh, like for the x and r so l by r is the tp v that we know so 2 pi f so x by r would be equal to 2 pi f tp so 2 into pi into f 50 50 has into tp just you calculated so all the value you know now you can find out the x by r which is coming 14.94 and which we use in the grid uh, in, the, in the e tab as the x by r for the system we are discussing till now the source or grid source circuit current and based on the source source uh, based on the source short circuit current based on the based on the source short circuit current short circuit current value whatever we have based on that we are putting the source x by r am i clear so far i am discussing the closing fault because we have we discussed that to find out the to find out the throw fault to find out the throw fault throw fault is uh, to calculate we need to know the resistance or impedance till the fault locations and that would be equal to source resistance plus connected transmission line resistance so first we need to find out the source x and r resistance and reactance for that we are doing all this exercise all this exercise yeah so now now when your x y r is done your x and r done now you go back and check your power triangle then you can calculate the resistance so if you review now let's re let's refer the power impedance triangle so power impedance triangle r x and z so r is the resistance in ohm x is the reactance in ohm so z is the impedance in ohm and that we can calculate is equals to under root square root of r square plus x square and theta here power angle uh, here we have and this power angle we can calculate cos theta r by z sin theta x by z and x by r is the tan theta now you can know that you know the x by r so you can calculate uh, you already know the x by r so you can calculate the theta so cos theta and sin theta we can calculate with help of the tan theta right so and once you know the x by r so you can find out the impedance z also so once you know the once you know the theta once you know the theta theta is equals to what tan inverse x by r am i correct uh, i need at least one or two engineer who can actively uh, respond in the chat box theta is equals to uh, tan inverse x by r so you know the theta now you go and put here r is equals to what 
z into cos theta so cos theta you know so cos this theta value into z you can find out the r and x okay now let us do this exercise let us let us do some calculations yeah same impedance triangle which you discuss in which you studied in btech same as well the same we are referring here i hope that you have uh, read the same impedance triangle the btech things only no any ctvt specific the, the impedance things only let us now let us calculate the resistance source resistance and source reactance with with two different approach not only with this approach with two different approach so source resistance and reactance calculations so we can follow the two different approach one approach what we just discussed based on the impedance triangle formula another approach by this method we know the uh, uh, by this method also we can calculate let us see let us go one by one this calculation so uh, let me check if i have uh, the excel sheet so are you guys uh, comfortable to continue or the remaining part we should continue in next session tomorrow whatever the pending in that this source resistance calculations then transmitter line and all these things we are going to discuss and then formula yeah it will take two hours then we can we can easily can easily uh, calculate tomorrow next day okay no worries no worries we will discuss the remaining part the source resistance and reactance part tomorrow but uh, so far it is clear to all of you i tried to keep it simple yeah uh, no need to tell yaar yeah, i will automatically go and do, will do the calculations i am not actually i need to do this calculations only but if i come directly and calculate the things if i calculating the source impedance angle tan inverse x by r so now when when i when i when i told you this this uh, power impedance formula when i told you this power impedance formula that theta is equals to tan inverse x by r then after if i go to this uh, go to this calculation theta is equals to tan inverse x by r you will feel comfortable so ultimately i am going to do this uh, this exercise only i will take one project ct sizing calculations will do calculations along with all of you but before coming this uh, things i'm just explaining you the concept impedance resistance so in the next class in the next class we will discuss all about this excel only now the basic concept is done uh, the base the basic concept is is set you know uh, uh, that why we are doing this calculations now you you know that how we are how we reach to this calculations what is the uh, like uh, basic background before this exercise yeah sure sure i will give you the assignment in you do uh, so what i take i am going to take the ct sizing calculations for the line uh, differential protection and the line distance protection this two i will do and you do the ct sizing for the transformer differential protection so through that we can uh, cover uh, line and transformer both okay okay thanks all thanks for joining the sessions today uh, remaining we will discuss in the next class yeah mohammad abzal try to keep it clear and keep it simple yeah amir no need to tell you yaar yeah. i myself will go in and will explain you the zone 1 2 3 4 fault and see again we have the dist uh, and in what zone how to do the distance setting calculations this we will discuss in the protection module not in the ct sizing calculations but in the ct sizing calculations i will tell you that uh, which zone fault we need to consider for the ct sizing calculations i will cover this you don't worry about that i will cover uh, uh, that's why i will take both uh, the ct 
sizing for the differential relay and the city sizing for the distance relay also so when i will come the city sizing for the distance relay then i will uh, then we will refer this formula then we will refer this formula and then i will uh, then i will discuss about ik zone 1 right now i am discussing about the i am going i am discussing about this it max so then i will discuss about this uh, ik zone 1 similarly okay so no no worries about that no worries okay i will share the reference calculations for the city burden We'll try, I mean, uh, we'll try. I'll, I need to delete some things like the logo, nameplate, uh, because this is used for the project. So I will try to save after removing this all legal compliance <laughs> from the seat. Okay, thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I will upload in the portal. Don't need to. No worries are. All the recordings automatically go in the portal. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night.